What's good, that gang? Welcome back to my regular deck news round of videos. This one again is a little different. I actually had a video all queued up and then the Verge drops a megaton of an interview with Valve. So we're gonna focus on that because it covers a lot of things. By the way, I just celebrated 40K and I'm on the road to 50. So do not forget to hit the like and subscribe since it helps the channel to grow. Also, I'm gonna be giving away a PC handheld very soon. So ring the bell so you don't miss that. All right, let's talk about this interview from The Verge. So yeah, The Verge posted an awesome interview with Pierre Liu and Lawrence Yang from Valve where they answered all sorts of questions about the Steam Deck and I want to point out a few great highlights from that piece because they really touched on everything. I mean, anti-cheat, the 6800U as competition, whether or not we'll see a Steam Controller 2 or a micro console, plus the sharing of performance profiles. The interview was from Sean Hollister who wrote one of my favorite Steam Deck reviews titled, quote, Steam Deck Review, it's not ready, end quote. He kind of leaned in on that in the beginning of this article too. Like, look at this subtitle for the headline, quote, nine months and 90 plus updates after the Steam Deck launch to early adopters. Here's an idea of what's next, end quote. I think that's interesting, calling owners of the Steam Deck so far early adopters, but I tend to agree with Sean's perspective and wording here. W what do you think? Do you consider us early adopters? Anyway, related to that point is the interview that starts with Valve saying that Steam Deck will probably never be stable compared to a console. They're working hard to reduce bugs that are introduced to the stable branch and they change the cadence of updates to stable to only be monthly in an effort to reduce the churn there. Also, the Steam Deck now downloads the update in the background, so all you have to do is restart and you'll get the latest update. Valve also disclosed that they've resumed shipping the noisier Delta fan. They came up with a solution to reduce the noise using some sort of engineered foam, so the noise shouldn't be as much of an issue anymore. Not to mention, most of you already know that they made the update where you can see which fan and other components you have in your Steam Deck from inside the settings menu. Also on the hardware side, Valve said that they are aware the repairability of the battery in the Steam Deck is their Achilles heel when it comes to repairing the Steam Deck. Pretty much everything else is excellent and relatively easy to remove and repair, but the battery is glued down and easily the hardest part of repairing the Steam Deck. They said that just like with the fan, they may address this and other hardware issues in future revisions of the existing Steam Deck. As for some sort of console, they're continuing to test the living room solution, but they're extremely focused on the deck, so we shouldn't expect too much there. Pierre Lou says, quote, we're doing our own experiments, but would also love to work with third parties to see what they would have to bring to the table as well, end quote. As for a Steam Controller 2, it's a similar story, but they say they definitely want to make it happen, and it's just a question of how and when. Again, they're focused on the deck, so he adds that they'd be excited to work with a third party here as well, if possible. When it comes to the 6800U, he implies that those handhelds are not real competition since they don't have great performance at the 8 to 12 watt range that is the sweet spot for the Steam Deck. And I tend to agree, even as someone that doesn't put as much of an emphasis on battery life, these other handhelds do really struggle in that regard, even with much larger batteries. For what it's worth, they did say they consider other handheld PCs to be partners, and I would absolutely agree with that too. These serve as devices that compete for a different audience in some ways. Specifically, he says, quote, I don't think you'll see off the shelf offerings based on mainline notebook product lines significantly outperforming that in maybe a few generations, end quote. There was no mention of the rumored Little Phoenix, which is said to be the next iteration of the chip in the Steam Deck. And on that note, Valve did say there will be a second gen Steam Deck, but not something that could be considered a Steam Deck Pro. I think Little Phoenix would fall more into the Steam Deck Pro category. And given that Pierre Liu said it'll be a few generations before we really see competition, I'm sticking to my prediction of not hearing about a second gen Steam Deck until 2024 at the earliest. That said, Valve are really not concerned about performance and listed two pain points that they would want to address in a new Steam Deck that screen and battery life. I think it's pretty safe to say you all agree with this. A lot of you have asked for an OLED screen and yeah, I'd love to see that too. Of course, an OLED screen could potentially use up more power, in which case that would make battery life that much more important to address in Steam Deck 2. When it comes to software updates, they do have a few things they're looking at. One of the bigger features they're actively working on is an audio mixer for game, music, and chat. That of course would be amazing and I can't wait to see it. They're also addressing Bluetooth audio lag. When asked about sharing graphical settings, Pierre Lou said that they'd considered it, but it's a massive undertaking and they're not looking into it seriously at the moment. They would instead try focusing on sharing per game power profiles that have a preset for settings in the quick access menu like frame limiter, GPU clock, and wattage. More generally, software is where they are currently placing most of their efforts. Yang says that the team is primarily working off of two big lists, things we want to fix and things we still want to make and that the bug list grows as more people get Steam Deck and get more feedback about things while the feature list kind of stays the same size because as we add features, we get more features we want to add 
based on our own experience and what we're hearing from customers, end quote. That provides a sort of explanation as to why sharing per game power profiles may have sounded like a priority back when the Steam Deck launched, but still hasn't been released. The software to-do list is growing and they have to shift priorities from time to time. That provides a sort of explanation as to why sharing per game power profiles may have sounded like much more of a priority back when Steam Deck launched, but just isn't something Valve is thinking much about right now. The software to-do list is growing and they have to shift priorities from time to time. Finally, there were a few updates when it comes to games. They said that Valve is open to form mobile games coming to deck even if they're touch only. They further said that they are in some cases directly responsible for making your favorite game run better. Examples included Elden Ring, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Halo Infinite. Funny enough, they recently fixed The Witcher 3 on Steam Deck when CDPR botched the launch of their big new update. Unfortunately, PC players are seeing lots of crashes and you literally couldn't play it on the Steam Deck until Valve made a Proton hotfix. So that's a major story from this very week about how Valve are making games work on Steam Deck even when developers won't or won't fast enough. Of course, we can't talk about games on deck without talking about Annie Cheat and Valve confirmed that they're still pushing very hard on this aspect. As The Verge said, Destiny 2 and Fortnite continue to snub the deck, but Valve are actively working on support for Master Chief Collection and Fall Guys, so progress is definitely being made. Finally, while they wouldn't speak on units sold and wouldn't confirm the 1 million number, Pierre Lou wanted to make sure to praise the open source community and said that the Steam Deck is absolutely a distributed effort. Valve has always been great about this, so yeah, thanks to all the awesome people that have contributed to Steam Deck being a thing. Overall, this was a great piece from The Verge and definitely cites a few of the concerns I had in a recent video, including Steam Controller 2 and a living room console. One of the big questions still unanswered for me was the matter of bringing Steam Deck to more regions. This was the number one thing I said Valve needs to fix in 2023. And there really was no mention of it outside of what we already know about Asia. I have a feeling that Sean Hollister did ask the question, but they just weren't ready to talk about it so it doesn't show up in the article. Another big thing that wasn't mentioned is the Deckard or Valve's rumored new VR headset. Many are speculating that it may already be in the productizing stage. That means that they are effectively done prototyping and beginning to develop it into a standard, fully tested, packaged, and marketed product. It's hard to say if that's true since they do have their hands full with the Steam Deck, but we will see how this pans out. By the way, we also need to talk about the big new releases from this week. Real quick, I want to shout out Jack Cave Adventure. This was actually released in January of last year, but apparently the dev has been following the Steam Deck closely ever since it was announced and is very happy to have his game Deck Verified as of this week to celebrate its 70% off starting today. They were kind enough to send me a key and I'm really digging it so far. This 2.5D platformer is giving me some serious Donkey Kong Country vibes and I'm here for it. I like the different movement mechanics that the jetpack provides and there's even a leaderboard. I'll be playing this more this weekend so you'll definitely find me on that leaderboard. Next up is High on Life, which was released earlier this week. Steam Deck HQ has great coverage on that one. They rate the performance on Steam Deck a 3 out of 5, saying that it feels fantastic on deck, but there are some compromises. He goes on to provide a build that will get you over 2.5 hours of battery life at 30 FPS, which is awesome. Let's go to Game Tech Planet for the next game, Crisis Core. Game Tech Planet points out that, yeah, it's not a very demanding game, but there are some stutters here and there. He points out that they seem like things that can be improved with a patch. More importantly, this is a game that's reasonable to run at 40 FPS, and that basically eliminates the stutters entirely while of course giving you more battery life. It seems like you can cap the TDP and probably squeeze up to like four hours of battery life if you want to on this one. And Gaming on Linux has this covered for Choo Choo Charles. Liam from Gaming on Linux says it has good enough performance on medium settings, but you'll probably want to still lock it to 30 FPS. He didn't like the game very much, but I personally am still extremely interested and I'm likely going to pick it up pretty soon. Wavetail got released last week. This one was locked to Stadia for a while, but now it's on Steam. SDHQ covered this one and gave it a solid 4 out of 5 on performance. It seems like the open world nature keeps it from really being able to push max settings and 60 FPS at the same time, but of course, it's still very much playable and you can lock it to 40 Hz. With a TDP limit of 10, you should be able to push nearly 3 hours on this neat looking gem. Alright, once again, watch out for my next video where I'm going to be giving away a PC handheld. It should be pretty fun, and spoiler alert, it's not a Steam Deck. Also, don't forget to leave a like if you liked the video or a dislike if you didn't, maybe with a comment to let me know why. Deck gang out. Goodbye.